Hello, in today's video, we're going to be replacing the radiator on this 2005 Honda Civic. And unfortunately for this generation model, the bumper does have to come off to remove the radiator. Well, let's get right to it. The first thing we'll do is remove all the clips holding the bumper, starting with these four up here. Using our clip removal tool, we'll pop the middle part of the clip up and off, and then remove the lower half of the clip as well, if they didn't come off with the upper piece. It'll have clips to remove here on the bottom as well, and they'll have to be removed in the same manner as the upper ones. Besides the clips, this one has the screw which I use a T20 Torx bit to remove rotating it counterclockwise. And now for these bolts, one on each side that attach it on the inside of the bumper. We'll want to use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen the bolt and remove it. Followed by this one on the opposite side, but this one feels like it has a nut in the back that keeps spinning, so I'll hold it with my finger as I rotate it off. Now with all the retainers off, let's pop off the sides of the bumper, just pull it back and it should unclip from the bracket. Same with this other side. And now just pull off the bumper and set it out of the way. Let's now disconnect and remove our battery using a 10 millimeter socket. We'll start by disconnecting the negative terminal. Should be able to loosen it a couple turns and rotate the terminal off. Now for the positive terminal, but this one has some wire terminal on it, so I'll just use a wrench. Now that we got it loose, let's remove it and set it out of the way followed by the battery hold down bracket. Using the same socket, we loosen this bolt Now we loosen this nut And once they're both loose, we remove the bolt Then just unhook this rod, I remove the bracket entirely And out comes the battery, making sure that you grab a good hold of it when removing it. Now for the radiator, the first thing we want to do is remove the radiator cap. And you'll want to be sure that before you remove this, that the car has been sitting and the engine is cold, so it's not under pressure. Which this one has been sitting for hours, but it's still kind of under pressure. So what I like to do is loosen the cap part of the way, then tilt the cap back and forth slowly, relieving the pressure. It's better to do this while having a rag in between, but I know it's not hot, so I don't need one. Once the pressure is gone, just remove the cap and set it out of the way. To drain our coolant, we we'll want to place a drain pan under the drain hole. Once it's in place, we just rotate the peacock counterclockwise till the coolant begins to drain. It can be loosened from either the bottom or from the top. And while I have it draining, I'll just continue removing other parts. For the radiator hoses, these clamps have been replaced. So for this style clamp, we'll use a flat blade screwdriver to loosen the clamp by rotating it counterclockwise. Once it's loose, remove the hose by twisting it and pulling the hose off. Doing the same for this lower hose as well. But this is more the style clamp you'll probably have, so for these you'll want to grab some pliers, or these specific hose clamp pliers, then squeeze the hose clamp, and either slide it back, or slide and pull the hose back at the same time. You can leave the hoses attached to the radiator side, but since this clamp is easy to remove, I'm going to remove the upper hose entirely. 
removing this ground strap from the radiator support with yet again the 10 millimeter socket. To remove this reservoir, we can use the 10 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the hold down screw. With the screw off, just lift it up and remove the hose from the guides, raising it over the radiator before disconnecting it will drain the coolant into the radiator, which will also drain it while the peckock is open. Once the reservoir is empty, just disconnect the hose and remove it completely. We're also going to have to disconnect the two transmission cooler lines, which I'm going to use these plugs to plug up the lines once I disconnect them to avoid a lot spilling. To disconnect them, we'll want to use some pliers to squeeze the line clamp and slide it down far enough to where it's not holding it in place. Before pulling the hose off though, you'll want to have something underneath to catch the fluid or absorb it. Then we can twist and pull the hose down, and once we get it off, we put the plug on the line and put the plug on the hose as well. And now we can do the same for the second one. Once I get it off, I push it back in to get the plugs ready and then remove it and plug them up. Now on to removing the retaining brackets that hold both the AC condenser and the radiator. Starting with the condenser, once again using the same 10mm socket to remove each bolt, then slide the bracket up and off. Followed by the second bolt plus the bracket. You'll want to leave the rubber grommets on so it protects the radiator on removal and install. Now for the radiator support brackets, removing each bolt with its corresponding bracket. And here goes the first, followed by the second. Now to remove the fans, starting with this passenger side, We'll loosen and remove the two retaining bolts, yes with the 10mm again. To disconnect the connector, press in on the tab as you pull back on the connector. To remove it, lift up the fan assembly to lift it off the lower guides, angling it to the side as we pull it out. For the driver's side, we have this connector here to disconnect. Now we can squeeze together this wire guide clip to remove it off of the fan. Then one down here to pull off the guide by pressing the small tab on the end as we pull the whole connector assembly off. With the condenser moved up to give us space to remove the radiator, we just have to remove the two remaining bolts that hold the driver's side fan. With the bolts removed, let's go ahead and pull out the fan. We're finally ready to remove the radiator, pulling it up halfway, guiding all the hoses up and out of the way as well. And out comes the radiator. The first thing we do at this point is drain our transmission fluid from our cooler by removing a plug and tilting the radiator into a drain pan.
Now to transfer everything over to our new radiator, starting with these rubber inserts. If they didn't come out with the radiator, they may still be where the radiator sits. Now for the second one. And this is where the two rubber inserts go into when installing the radiator. Well let's go ahead and swap over all these remaining hoses to the new radiator. These transmission cooler lines may still have fluid, so you'll want to be prepared for that. Now for the second one. Removing these rubber plugs, then reinstall each hose to each corresponding side. This other plug as well, then install the hose. The lower radiator hose, tightening the clamp as well. Then we can go back and install each clamp on the transmission cooler hoses. With everything we installed onto the new radiator, we can now install the radiator, guiding all the hoses in as you do. You'll want to be careful while guiding in the radiator to avoid damaging any of the fins. Before mounting it, let's reinstall the driver's side fan, which slides into these holes on the radiator. And these are the pins that you want to guide into these holes. Carefully guide in the fan, and then install and tighten the two mounting bolts. Now before mounting the radiator, you'll want to verify that the radiator has those rubber bushings, sitting completely inside the cutouts, which you can see through these front corners. Now we can install the radiator and the AC condenser support brackets plus their bolts. Once we got them all installed, let's tighten all four. When installing the passenger side fan, you'll want to angle it in so it can get around the center section on the radiator support. Once it's mounted, we can install and tighten the two bolts. Onto the fan connectors, clicking them back into place. followed by this wire guide and this connector guide will slide it into place. Reinstall the two transmission cooler hoses into the lines followed by the clamps. Followed by the second one and this clamp. Let's reinstall the lower radiator hose plus its clamp. Now the upper and tighten that clamp too. Reinstall this ground strap with the bolt. Then tighten it. Let's now go ahead and get the battery back in. Followed by the reservoir. 
making sure that the tab slides into the notch. Then install and tighten the bolt. Reinstall the reservoir hose to the radiator. Install the battery bracket, hooking the rod into the hole. Reinstall the bolt. And now tighten both the bolt and the nut. Reinstall the battery terminal, starting with the positive. And now for the negative. Now to get the bumper back on, we'll hang the center part over the radiator support first. Then line up the bumper to the bottom of the headlights. Once they're both lined up, we move over to the sides and tap them into the bracket like so. Now we just go around reinstalling all the clips. Reinstall and tighten the two bolts on the sides. Followed by tightening the screw here on the bottom. And finally the clips down here as well. Now to add the coolant and fill the system, I'm going to use this funnel, which works really good to fill and allows you to bleed out the air that's in the system. Using the proper fitting, we install it over the radiator with the cap portion, tightening it into place. And now we slide the funnel portion into that fitting. For the coolant, I'm going to use this blue coolant that's meant for Hondas and other vehicles that use this same type. This one here comes pre-mixed since that's all I could find, so when it's pre-mixed, we just add it as it is. So at this point, we keep adding it till it fills. Once it does, we start the car and let it run till the thermostat opens. Once it opens, it will pull cooling in, pushing out any air that may be behind the thermostat. When doing this, we want to make sure that we have the heater on, so it fills the heater core as well, removing any potential area where air can get stuck. And what it's doing right now is burping air out, being that the thermostat is opening, allowing more coolant in. So when you notice that it stops and no more air is coming out, it's done, then we can put the plug back in, remove the funnel, and put the cap back on. So after turning off the car, we'll want to check out the transmission fluid level, since we did lose some in the radiator. And the level is just a little past the full mark, so this is okay. Now to fill the reservoir to in between the low mark and the full mark, removing the funnel, and reinstall the reservoir cap. And with that, we complete our radiator replacement and this video. I hope you were able to find this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.